Welcome everybody. We're doing a little video on the rapture is pre-tribulation. So let's find out what 1 Thessalonians 4.13 has to say. But I would not have you to be ignorant. So Paul doesn't want us to be ignorant. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So those who have fallen asleep believing in Jesus, we don't have to sorrow over them as those who have no hope, those who didn't believe. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in uh, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So God is going to bring with him the spirits and souls of those who have believed when he comes to rapture us. And we're going to compare this with um, Matthew 24. Immediately after those days, no, after the tribulation of those days, those days being the seven years, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, and the stars will fall, so it's going to be pitch black from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So God will shake the heaven out, you know, shake out uh, those things that don't belong there. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. So the sign of the Son of Man is when he comes with, in the brightness of his coming with great light on the clouds. And the tribes of the earth are the twelve tribes of Israel will mourn when they see the wounded Savior. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels. So he comes with his angels, not with the believers. With a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So the spirits of the just men made perfect, which are in heaven, those kingdom of earth believers will be um, gathered together into the kingdom. And this is called the gospel of the kingdom. But we believe in the gospel of Christ. So the mystery, uh, God is forming the body of Christ. The mystery is that, uh, that he's forming this other group during the dispensation of grace, which began in Acts 9 till the rapture. And so we're going to believe the gospel of Christ. So the gospel of Christ is I this. It's um, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I, and that's Paul, declare the gospel by which ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So he died for our sins, he was buried in that tomb on the cross, okay? And then he was buried in that tomb, and he rose again the third day according to prophecy. We already receive eternal life the moment we believe. So, the moment we believe, then we receive his righteousness. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this is how we become rapture ready when we believe the gospel. And this is another verse that says that we're not going through the... Uh, wrath to come or the tribulation and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come 1 Thessalonians 1 10 so let's go back and look at the um, Thessalonian verses that, that come next for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So this is revelation given to Paul. The rapture was a mystery. 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent pre-event or, or go before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, so the, those who de die believing will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians. Oh wait, there's one more little verse. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. So this is First Thessalonians 4.13 through 18. So let's look at these sounds that accompany the rapture. Okay, so. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a... And so there are three sounds at the rapture. Shout. Body of Christ, come up here. With the voice of the archangel, it's probably going to be Michael the archangel to Israel. And three, the trump of God. So the trump of God really has two blasts. There's the first trump for those who, who were dead in Christ. They rise first. And then there's another blast for, for us who are alive in Christ. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So here's the Lord. Here's the dead in Christ who rose first. And then here are those that were alive when the rapture happened. Behold, I show you a mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. So, in, in a twinkling of an eye is like light, you know, reflecting off the eye. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall ra be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. So, here we see the last trump, and the, with the first trump, the, the dead rise incorruptible in their incorruptible bodies, and then in the last trump, we go. Up. Okay, so let's go over again um, how we receive righteousness. We receive the imputed righteousness when we believe what Christ did for us. And um, our sins are placed on him by God and we receive his righteousness. Because we have to believe um, in order to avoid eternal lake of fire we believe for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received so this is information Paul received from Jesus how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so Christ died for us in mystery also and and that was information to Paul to be forgiven, we must believe in Jesus Christ and the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Because when we do, we receive his righteousness. To, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So let's look at a few more rapture verses. Let's look at Philippians. Philippians 3. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking for the Savior to come, to rapture us. And there's no signs ahead of time. 
who shall change our vile body. Our bodies are vile because we have the sin, sin nature and they're, you know, they're not meant to last. They're mortal. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body so we can get a glorified body that will never corrupt according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. So he's going to be able to use the body of Christ to subdue all things to himself. Keep that in mind. That's Philippians 3, 20 through 21. Well, we'll go back to that soon, but first I want to show you some verses in Titus. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Titus 2, 11. So the grace of God appeared to Paul, who, who offered salvation to all men during this dispensation, when Christ appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So we're going to live in a gracious way, um, soberly, that's seriously, righteously, and godly. We can do that because we have the spirit of his son in us. We have his righteousness. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're looking for the blessed hope. If we don't have to go through death, it will be a blessed hope. But even dead or alive, we're going to be raptured. And the glorious appearing that's the, that to rapture us Jesus is God, and he's our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that, we might, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. Titus 2, 11 through 14. So the good work is sharing the gospel and the mystery. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So... These two appearings to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and then during this dispensation of grace which is called the mystery he's forming the body of Christ and at the rapture another appearing of Jesus Christ we're living with inside this parentheses that have one, uh, two appearings first and last appearing and then after the rapture, we go to the judgment seat of Christ. So we're going to go over that more in a minute. But let me show you what God is going to do with us. He's going to um, have us take the place of um, Satan and his angels. Let me show you. So there, there's three heavens. The first heaven is the sky where the birds fly around the earth. The second heaven is where Satan and his fallen angels are. We call it the starry heaven or outer space. And then the third heaven is where Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. So after we're raptured, we're going to be up in the third heaven. And we're going to be waiting for Satan and his angels to be cast out. And that's going to happen in the middle of tribulation. And then we'll take their spots. And then with the Son of God in us, His Spirit, and our glorified bodies, we'll be able, He'll be able to subdue that place. So, um, in the, in, here it says in Revelation 12, 7 through 9, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So Michael and his good angels fight against the dragon, which is Satan, and his bad angels, and win over him. And their place is not found there in heaven anymore, because we're going to take their place. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out. Um into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so that's the middle of tribulation so the bible is laid out prophecy mystery prophecy and the last piece of the bible was what paul's writings which is the mystery so let's go over the timeline real quick 
So in order to understand it, we have to rightly divide the word of truth where God divides it. And he divides it, between, you know, uh, prophecy over here from mystery, and then you have more prophecy later. Okay, so let's talk about the timeline. If, <clears throat> before he made Adam and Eve, Lucifer rebelled and drew one-third of the angels with him and became Satan. Then Adam and Eve rebelled also and um, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God told them not to eat from. And after Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden, um, time elapsed and then there was the flood with Noah. And then after that, the people didn't spread out, but they made the Tower of Babel and worshipped Satan and his angels from there. Idolatry, because they didn't worship God. So God made his own nation out of Abraham and um, gave him the sign of circumcision. So there was a division between the circumcision, Abraham and his people, and the uncircumcision, the rest of the people on earth. And then from Abraham came Moses, and Moses gave the law and showed Israel that they couldn't keep the law because they had inherited Adam's sin nature. And so they broke it and, you know, made the golden calf. And then um, came David, and after David came Daniel. And Daniel was given the 490 years prophecy to when Messiah returns. And then the dotted line is 400 years of silence. And after 400 years of silence came John the Baptist. And he introduced the Son of God, Jesus Christ, uh, to Israel. But they didn't believe that he was their Messiah. And he called 12 apostles. He chose 12 apostles for service to God. And they preached the gospel of the kingdom. And Peter was the head apostle. And the yellow man represents people saved um, by Peter's group. So then Christ died on the cross for um, the sins of his people, was buried and rose again. And then he was here for 40 days, and after 40 days, um, he ascended to heaven. And 10 days later, he sent down the Holy Ghost on Peter and the little flock and gave a renewed offer of the kingdom. So, you know, to say that he was their Messiah. So he, uh, they rejected that by st killing Stephen, stoning him to death in Acts 7. So the nation of Israel fell. But the little flock continued until they were put on hold in Acts 15, Galatians 2, 7, and 9. In Acts 9 is when Paul was saved on the road to Damascus because the glorified Lord Jesus appeared to him. And he made him who had taken part in the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost by stoning Stephen, his one apostle to one body of Christ, to get, reveal the mystery. And there was an interruption in prophecy and a delay of the seven years of tribulation. So, um, the appearing to Saul of Tarsus during the but now that we live in, the dispensation of grace, where gen lost Gentiles have the opportunity to believe the gospel and become part of the body of Christ. Paul wrote to all that be in Rome. He's writing to those who are in Gentile area. And after our, the appearing to, of Christ to rapture us, we'll go to the judgment seat of Christ. And then we'll go be presented to the Father. Then after we're raptured, it will be a little while, then God will restart the program with Israel, and there'll be the seven years of tribulation will begin when Antichrist signs the seven-year covenant with Israel to allow the unbelieving Jews to offer animal sacrifices in the rebuilt temple. Then after that comes the second coming of Christ, 
to set up his millennial or 1,000 year reign. Then at the end of that reign, Satan will be, who will have been in the bottomless pit for those thousand years, will be let loose to draw away any Gentiles that don't want to be loyal to King Jesus. And um, then they'll be put down that rebellion. God, uh, Jesus Christ will put down that rebellion with fire. And then comes the great white throne judgment of the lost, all the lost from all, all ages. And then God will set up, a, a de, you know, they'll go to the lake of fire. All the lost will go to the lake of fire for eternal torment. Then um, God will make the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, because it says here in Ephesians 1.10, which comes after that, this is called the dispensation of the fullness of time. This is what God's going to do. Having, okay, so God has one kingdom that by one cross he saved both groups have in heaven and in earth having made known unto us the mystery of his will the father's will according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times which comes after a great white throne judgment and the new, new heaven and new earth he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him so that's how it's going to be. So um, we're grateful that we have believed. And we're grateful that we don't have to go through the tribulation. And I hope that this was useful to you. And so what is the great... Uh, okay, so there's Paul. Paul is the apostle for... The one apostle to one body of Christ. And what is the greatest act of love? Well... When Christ died on the cross, basically he said, Father, place his or her blame on me and let them have my righteousness. Now, if you want some further reading on this, you can read God's Secret, available on Amazon, a primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth. Or you can get The Certainty of the Pre-Tribulation Rapture by Marianne Manley. Um, which is the first and second Thessalonians commentary with all the Bible verses in there. And it also comes in color. Okay. And so my website, let me just move this. Ugh. Okay, is um, MarianneManley.com and the YouTube channel is Salvation Rightly Dividing and the rapture and truth be told also carries our YouTube videos. So that ends our little Bible lesson for today. Um, I hope it was useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.